Hey guys, welcome back to shop. Hey, today I'm gonna lace up a wheel. I'm gonna start by polishing the hub up, cleaning it up, polishing it, and uh, then we'll go ahead and lace it and then uh, true it up. And maybe if we got time, we'll get the tire on too. So let's get to it. I'm gonna disassemble the wheel today. We got. Got a lot of cleanup and polishing to do on the on the hub itself, and uh, of course, uh, you know it probably could have cleaned up pretty good. It, there's plenty of rust in it here that wouldn't have gone away, but you could have made a good roller out of it or a good driver. But we're, I've got the wheels, and I'm. I've got the front spokes, so I'm going to start on the front, the back one will come later on down the road. There's no real uh, special way to get these off. I like to go ahead and keep the spokes if I can. You know, maybe I'll run into something down the road where I need them. So I always try to take them out, but if they're just too rusty to get out, then what I normally do is just take a cut off wheel and I just go around and cut them all off and, and be done with it. Throw the rim and the leftover spokes away. But if I can get them out, and I actually have had these soaking for, oh, a week or so probably. So, so far everything is coming loose on them. And I've actually had some pretty good luck replating them. But, you know, I, I got a set of front ones for this for uh, $40, uh, including shipping, I think. So it's just not worth my time. It's a lot of work to clean them and then plate them after you, you know, drag all the equipment out to do it and everything. But you never know when you might get in a pinch and not be able to get them and you need them. So you do, and uh, at least that way you'll have it. But in this case, I got them, and I've got some rear ones coming in from Buchanan, so we'll have that portion of it covered. I probably should have showed you what the uh, the hub looked like I think you probably saw it it was it had like uh, moss and stuff growing on it and we're just gonna we're gonna polish it up a little bit I'm not gonna go too crazy with it but we want to get rid of all the, the tarnish and the, the uh, corrosion that was on it and actually I started doing this with a wire wheel just try to get the corrosion off. actually I bead blasted it first and then went to a wire wheel and now uh, I'm using a, a a black stick on a buffing wheel here I'll go from I'll get it down pretty good with the black stick and then we'll go to the red rouge for the polish like I say, I'm not going to go too crazy about it, but I, I want to get rid of all that nasty looking stuff before I start building the wheel. You know, if you've ever, never done this before, you always want to you always want to buff on the bottom of the wheel. If you buff on top, it'll throw it down if it catches and mess up your parts. And everything is done pretty lightly. It'll let the, uh, the buffing compound and the wheel do the work. Just hold on to your part, guide it. There we 
we're going to use the red rouge just like this just put a little on your your pad doesn't take a lot now this doesn't remove any metal it just shines up what you had the uh, the black stick is what removes the metal it's an emery Can tell the difference? Haven't done it here yet. Have here. You get a little black uh, stuff on there, and that just wipes off. It's some of the material, some of the stick that you put on it. If you get a lot of it, you've got too much on there. It usually just shows up around like the holes or something because it's trying to rub it off. Okay, that's kind of what we look like after we get it cleaned up. Got some grease on my paper towel though. Little Windex will take care of that. I think I better get my get a different paper towel though. I was using that for the grease on the swing arm bolt here. That really don't do anything on the inside. That's where the where I just use the wire wheel, just cleans it up good there, uh, but it doesn't really polish it. A lot of people uh, spray clear lacquer on them. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, I'm not real sure what I'm gonna do here right now. I'm gonna think about it a minute. And, uh, cause you really, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it now. Uh, but it does cause it to be a little darker so you just need to be prepared if you're going to do that and on the other hand if you if you don't do it it will tarnish quicker than it does without it but it will be a little darker if you put the clear lacquer on but uh getting ready here to go ahead and and start lacing up the front wheel so once i get everything cleaned up and get going uh, I'll bring you back for that. I can take you here and just kind of let you look at the bike a little bit. I've started to put it together a little bit. I've got the swing arm back on it. I've got the shocks on. They will have to come back off in order to put like the chain guard, at least this side does. And I got the fender on and the handlebars on. So it's kind of starting to look like a bike again. Once I get the front wheel so I can remount it, then at least uh, I can put the center stand down and it will hold it up by itself. And right now it, it does it this way, okay also, even on the floor. But I'm gonna take that down and get ready to lace up a wheel. Now I gotta get my bearings in there. And I've got the spacer already on this one. And we're gonna Tap it in there. And it's like that pop loose. Never seen one like that.
like this home and hold them there. We've got room for a seal, which I'm going to leave out right now because uh, this is going to fit uh, in my truing stand. All right, so that's our next next thing is to start getting our spokes out and getting them lined up. Okay, uh, first thing we want to do is just take a look at your wheel. You see the witness mark here where it's pulled into the hole and it's kind of going over the edge right here. So that's your outer spoke. So the ones in between are going to be your inners. And you want to start with the inners. So you, you're going to go ahead and put those in and they're the ones that are not quite a 90 degree. The outers, uh, I don't have them even unwrapped here yet. See the difference? This is the outer. It's, it's more of a 90 degree than the inner. And let me show you why. Let's see, don't get mixed up here. You will, they have got to go over this edge and come at an angle down towards the middle. So those are, those are going to be the ones that have more of an angle on them. So they're, they've got to go this way. But if you don't put your inners in first, you won't be able to get the outers in. So you start with those, and like I say, here's here's where the inner or the uh, the outer goes, where it goes over the over it. So the one in between will be your. Yep, I'm doing it wrong now. Got to go this way, Dale. Okay. So that's going to go in between, so it's going to be every other one for your uh, your inners. And it's the inner spoke. Why? Because it's inside. Here's the hub, hub here. It's inside here. Outside ones, the spoke will actually be on the outside. So let me get all these in. Okay, I've got all those on on that side. Now, Again, now it's a little more difficult if you're if you're using a new hub because you're you're going to you're going to make the start uh, from that. But when you've got a used one, just look for your witness marks. Here again, you can see where the spoke pulls over the outside. That's going to be your your outer. And here's another one here and another one there. So you're just going to do the one next to it. And that's going to be your your inner and then again you just go every other one until you fill up this side Looks like we got enough. Should be what 18 of each, 36 total, uh, 36 total uh, holes in the rim. So the next thing we do, set this over. Okay, kind of the next thing you want to do is you want to get, in this case, let's just put all the lower ones kind of pointing around this way and the upper ones pointing back the other way and that doesn't work exceptionally well but it, it does work
sort of like that. Now just find your your valve stem hole and this is going to be you've got you got to look for the which which one is going to be mostly direct in line and in this case it's going to be this one so it looks like we're one two three the fourth one over from that valve stem hole and remember to get your lube on I just use what I have left over from uh, Buchanan's they always send it out with it I don't think it's a big deal you just need something so you don't gall the threads I would just use a, a good like 30 weight oil or something if I don't have something that's made for it. Okay, so that one looks like it's it's right in line with this one. So I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four holes over. And you leave everything pretty loose and you just continue on around in the same fashion and you want to try to keep these spokes the bottom ones uh, turned the other way as you go around otherwise you'll have trouble getting them in position so one two three four Okay, I've got all those in on this side. They're all going, they're all like I started out, four apart. So now we're going to flip it over and try to keep that the same angle. And of course everything gets stuck here. Just pull it out. Make sure everything is above your other spokes. And these should go right directly next to them if you're if you've got it situated right okay so this one is going to go right here uh, here's here's my valve stem hole so it's going to go right directly on the other side of it just like it should but it's going to cross these others so that's that's what you want to look for and you have to kind of keep all these above like that It'll always look right when you've got it right. The, uh, the, the spokes will go directly into the, the wheel the way it looks like it should at the right angle of your nipple holes down here. So just if it looks right, it is right. I'll continue around okay got all those in and if you look you're you just need to look to see that they're all crossing in the same fashion 
and nothing's loose or nothing's tight here yet everything's still loose so you just just pick you a place and start I usually start at the uh, uh, valve stem hole right nope that ain't it either oh yeah there here we go okay so when I've made it all the way around then I've I've got I'm right next to each one see each one of them is just right next to each other and they're the dimple in the rim looks like it's facing the way the spoke is going if it's looking like it's going the opposite direction or another direction then you've got it in you've got it started in the wrong hole so that gets us started right there then we get our outside spoke and what I do with the all of these really is I just pull my rim kind of off the edge here like this and that way I can go ahead and put those in and you can put it just start it in right like that and look at the direction that it was at before and that's how it's going to go now and you're going to go to again the the hole in the rim that it looks like it should go to and it's going to cross just like the others did you're just starting another another pattern here and the thing is once you get the first really the first round in of your inners it's it's really easy just follow the pattern and like I said it's much easier with a used rim because you can you've got witness marks showing you where the uh, the old spoke went just just follow that pattern okay there's our first one now we'll put our oops goes in from the inside and again it just goes to where it looks like it ought to go now these will be until you have the rim centered you may have to kind of push and bend it a little bit down but then once you center the rim everything comes up to where it ought to be and we'll do that when we put it in the stand we'll start centering everything up then so again I'm just gonna we're leaving everything loose we're just starting the spokes and I'm gonna go all the way around okay, finishing up this side Okay, everything looks uniform. Now we'll flip it over the other side and we'll continue on the same way. Now, like I say, if you don't put these in, the inners in first, you're never going to get the outers in. You've got to put those in first. They'll be crossed and you will not be able to get to, get to them. So this is the way to do it. I think I've said this many a times that it's a, it was a learning experience for me the first time that I did it, as it will be for anybody. And you just have to, there's some rules you have to go by, and that's one of them. If you don't, you're going to be tearing it apart or bending the crap out of spokes trying to get them to, to go where you want them to go. Okay, let me finish this. Okay, we've got our last one going on here.
Okay, so there we go. We're all spoked up. Everything looks uniform. Looks like I had a spoke fall out on me. Or a nipple. Just didn't have it in far enough. Trying to keep everything loose because I know we're going to have to adjust everything in the center of the wheel. But like I said, it's, uh, you know, everything looks uniform the way it is, and it all went in without having to bend any spokes. Uh, it's just, just follow the rules, inside ones first. And then once you find the right hole for the other one, in this situation where it's cross two, you're, you're gonna be every fourth hole. And that's when you're, when you're doing the, uh, the outers, you're gonna do the same thing. It's just gonna, it's gonna be every fourth hole. So the next thing to do is get it in your stand. And don't be surprised if it doesn't look straight. It's just the way it is. Okay, once you get it into this stand, I've got I've got a little uh, guide down here at the bottom. Hear it? Okay, so where it's hitting, what I want to do is raise raise it up. So I'm going to look up here, and I've got a lot of loose spokes. And I'm actually going to try to draw this up with these spokes at, without touching. It's just going to be a kind of a handful here. Okay, so we've, we've got it off of the plate here. And I just kind of move it up until it's a little higher. And the same thing. Just bring it up a little bit. I'm going to start tightening these up. None of these are tight yet. They're just, you just work at them a little at a time. Then you go back and see, see, we've got it off of it. So now we just keep moving this up. So we keep and just keep keep going at it a little at a time. That doesn't mean you're not going to have to loosen things up from place to place and and change it a little bit here and there. It's just it's a it's a process, and you just have to kind of just do a little at a time until you're. So I'm, I've got them to a point now where I, I think I need to just go ahead and snug them up. So let me go all the way around. We'll do that. Now, I want you to notice something. Do you see how this moved in this way? And it also hit this at the same time. So this is lower on this side than it is on this side. So what we need to do is we need to start pulling 
this to try to straighten it up now too. It's a process, you just have to keep messing with it. So at that point, I'm gonna try to draw this over. See, it's coming over this way. So I'll draw that over by Let's see, am I right? Yeah. We need to pull it this way a little bit. So I'm just going to start right about three or four before that and just start tightening them just a little bit. And the one it's the ones on this side. On the side you want to pull it to. We've, we've got it off of the, the bar anyway. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to start lightly tightening some of these that are allowing it to weave this way. Okay, I'll just keep on going. Okay, now I've moved the bar over to the side. And you can see now that we've got, it's touching here. We want to start pulling these, the other areas that are not touching this way, just a slightly. And they need to be these over here, not those over there. You may have to loosen some of these. Okay, so we're, we're touching there. Right there is where we, we need to start pulling. So we'll just uh, we'll tighten these a little bit. Some of these are really loose yet. And what we're doing is kind of centering the wheel. Okay, now let's go to the other side and pull these where it's touching. Just start a little bit before that, like right here. See, we're pulling it away from it. And those are all the ones I'm tightening now are the ones on the other side. I'm just right-handed here, so I'm reaching across to get them. Okay, we've got it totally off of it. Now, we just want to keep doing a little bit of moving, pulling these over like a little before let's go to right here tighten this one a little bit tighten this one and this one and this one see how it's starting to move it over okay there's where it's starting to pull that way so we'll Again, a lot of these are really loose. And we're going to have to go back and work on the up and down some more too. But we're, we're starting to get this. See, the whole, the whole reason we moved to the side play was because it was so... Uh, it was so bad that it was causing one side to hit and the other side to not hit. So we just need to go a little at a time 
we're still getting close here so we'll continue to pull a little bit that way and I'll just continue on to that until I need to change uh, back to up and down okay just uh, put my gizmo on the top here so I can kind of tell there it's a little easier than watching down below and plus I've got my my other one sitting here on the side of it so I've, I'm really watching two places so I'm just kind of going until I you know I, I have to do like here I'm, I'm starting to hit and there you see it's dropping down so and then it comes right back up again now one thing I, I always tell you about is the weld on these steel rims right here and you you will always have a little up and down right there you're not going to be able to get it out so you just have to do the best you can but you just keep piddling with it and in this case uh, I'm watching it down at the bottom to make sure I'm not getting out too much there but at this point here when I get to the high spot I'll start tightening trying to draw it down toward the hub and then as it gets to the low spot I'll loosen these and actually the high spot should be just about uh, 180 degrees from the low spot so you're kind of working them both together and you just have to go back and forth back and forth and the same when it's when you start getting out down here then you've got to pull that back in it's just a slow process and you just have to keep after it so here we've got this is a high spot so I'm just I gotta kind of get you out of the way here kind of starts right about here so at that point I just tighten some of these a little bit more as you go in because that's where more of it is you probably can't see anything but my head there and it's all just small increments I'm still showing a high spot there so I'm Still pulling it down. And I'm just going to continue with that. But as you tighten these, you're probably going to put the the uh, the wheel out this way so you've got to you got to keep an eye on that also okay there's our low spot and a lot of it is right there at the weld but what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen that up a little bit Okay, see that's let it move, so I'm hitting, actually hitting the rod up here again.
right there. So right in here, I'm going to tighten these a little. Right there at that weld is where I'm, my low spot is, and like I said, you're going to have that. But I'm going to I'm going to back these off just a little bit, try to get a little bit more of it out. Especially on a street bike, you don't want to. You know, dirt bike not a big deal to have a little up and down, but you don't want it on a street bike. Of course, this one's not a real speedy one, but I'm just saying. You know, this is not where you really want up and down. You'll end up really feeling that. But we've just got to keep working at it. And you can tell here, let me get you down here. that I'm starting to get some wobble down here again. So looks like I need to move this in just a little bit. Okay. Starting right there, I want to pull it this way, so I'm going to tighten just this side, these spokes for this side. That little spot right there where I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten the other side to try to pull that over. Okay. And now we're gonna go back up to the top. there we are getting there but it's 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 a slow process just got to keep after it work this one pull down your highs loosen up your lows and then when you get down here if it's uh, if you're coming over and hitting the rod you either want to loosen this or tighten the other side that's just it's just uh, a slow process, back and forth, back and forth. You're not going to do this. Most people are not going to probably do it in a day. Uh, you know, sometimes I can get them in a, in a couple hours, and sometimes I might be at it a day or two. It just, you know, it depends. A lot of times these wheels are not all that great. And I've actually had some where I just could not get them. And you just got to un, unspoke everything get you another wheel and go at it again. But 99% of the time, you can get the majority of that out. Okay, I think we're pretty close here now. The up and down is right there is the seam. So I've got a little divot right there. I can feel it with my finger more so on this side. So that's just about all the up and down that I've got. <clears throat> Let me get you down here. And the right there.
I thought that was a seam, but it's not. And probably tighten this side over here a little bit. See, where's the seam at? Right there. You can see that. Yeah, that's mostly what I'm seeing. So I think we're in pretty good shape. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and make sure that I've got the, the tension pretty much the same on all the spokes. And get you over here. And I'm just going to, right here is my valve stem. I made it, yeah, right there. So they sound pretty, pretty much the same. A lot of people use a torque wrench. I don't, never have, probably never will. It works for me. Pretty much just the seam. That's the only thing I'm seeing in the weld. I like that. Now after you are satisfied with your your alignment, then go back to your your valve stem hole and go and check every spoke to make sure it's not sticking out. If it's sticking out, any of them are, then you need to see that one sticking out a little bit but not bad. That one that one shouldn't be a problem. And there's the valve stem again. So I only had one and right there and it's not an issue. It's probably got uh, two threads sticking out of it. So the the uh, rim band will take care of that and protect the uh, the tube. But if you've got one sticking out there quite a ways you need to make sure you grind it off. That, I, think, uh, I think that's uh, good. I'm happy with it, so I'll go ahead and get the rim band on, get a tube out, and get the, get the tire put on. Alright, get our little 
band on here. I don't know whether you remember or not, but these are our 17 inch rims, not 18s. Kind of got to get it squared away here so it's covering up everything. The, the tubes came with uh, the proper bands. I think it was the tubes, maybe it was the tires. Anyhow, we've got, we've got what we need. All right. Still got a couple places. There, now I think we're good. Okay, this is the brake side here, so this would be the direction of travel. And you've got to pay attention to some tires. In this case, we got an arrow here that says rotation this way. So the tire needs to go on that way. I may have to get my tire kind of hold her out to do this. I, I didn't when I, when I took the old ones off because they were so old, they pretty much slid off. But these are not real stiff tires. There. Okay, let me get some air. I always take the valve stem out when I'm mounting tires. I, I do want to put some air in it to get the wrinkles out but I don't want air in it. Oh, that's cheap. Guess I'm gonna have to get my real tool. All right. Oops. Nope, I don't think that one, that's one of those that's not gonna. Sometimes you got to have it in there. I just want it to, to get the wrinkles out. And then we find the hole again. We're about to get it here. I prefer not to use tools if I can, but probably not going to be able to. Looks like I'm probably going to need it just to finish it off. Just don't go any more than straight up with your tool, though. There we go. Straighten up my valve stem. And if we get her core back in.
So there we go. Okay guys, I've still got to clean up and probably polish the uh, backing plate. So I won't be able to mount it for another day or two until I get that done anyhow. But we've made pretty good progress on that today on the wheel. And I just got notified that uh, uh, Buchanan's sent my spokes today. so. They will be here Friday, so I can do the rear one then. Uh, I may not do it then, but at least I'll have the stuff to do it. So, there you go. So there you have it, guys. It's, uh, I've done some of these uh, lacing videos before. They usually don't do real well, but, you know, it's got to be done. Uh, I think it's probably because there's just not that many people that do them. Uh, usually they take them in somewhere and have them done. But anyhow, uh, here's another one. We went through it. I tried to go through it as best I could so that you could see the problems and what we do to correct them. And uh, it's, it's really not a big deal. It looks astronomical when you're laying there with all those spokes hanging out trying to figure out where they go but it really isn't that bad so just next time get in there and do it yourself I don't know what they get to do this anymore but I bet it's 150 bucks uh, I haven't done I haven't done one for pay in a long time and uh, it seems like even in the 70s we were getting around 50 bucks to do them so uh, there you go. Hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.